Welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, March the 27th. I'd like to start by thanking our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. Uh, my first guest is Antonia Paquin, and we're going to be talking about the youth climate strike that happened last Friday. But when you watch this, it's going to be a week into the future. So, um, Antonia, maybe we can start off. What is the climate situation now? <laughs> it's difficult to overstate how serious our situation is right now. If you're paying any kind of attention, then if you're not overwhelmed, then you're not paying attention, basically. Like, if you're not, if you're not paying attention to our situation, then I don't know. <laughs> It like, is a mess. It's, it's a, a total disaster, mess. disaster, and yet, you know, you can read the newspapers, watch TV, and listen to the radio. You don't really hear that message of how much they're pushing for more. So it is, uh, it is a mess. Yeah. You know, of course, this, this IPCC report really states it quite clearly, and give, even giving us a practical time frame that we have, what, 11 years now to radically reshift basically everything we know. You know, deep adaptation, far-reaching, unprecedented changes in order to, in order to, to, to basically survive uh, or else, or else we, we have, we have um, runaway climate change. And, and it's enormous. It's totally enormous. Um, I mean, that, that, that means 700 million climate refugees over well, the all next... All our lives are at risk. The totally. future is completely and Everything at risk. we know and understand yes. is at risk. Yes. And it's not only the climate change, it's the des destruction of our environment in 50 other ways as well. But uh, you know, 50,000. Yeah, 50,000. Yeah. At least. So right now, Nebraska is underwater. Much of the central United States is flooded. It's not being talked about. There was a huge uh, cyclone that hit East, Eastern Africa, and uh, I mean, the North is melting, the South is melting, blah, 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 blah. So maybe we should move right down to question <laughs> number seven, which is what can we do? Because really that's all that's important is we've got to make, start to make some changes. What, what's complicated about the whole thing is that it, it's so enormous that it's really hard to wrap your mind around the situation. I mean. You know, news report after news report is one devastating thing after the other. Oh, this species goes extinct. This one is nearing extinction. Mo you know, Mozambique, I'm glad you brought that up. That's thousands of people displaced. That's, that's, that's thousands of people killed. I mean, it, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's devastating. You know, people on, on their rooftops waiting for days and days without, without water. Their whole families have been swept away. I mean, the, the, it's catastrophic to an extent that it's quite difficult to, to you cannot overstate how serious the situation is. Right. And last summer we were covered in smoke and uh, you know, it's... Well, and, and it's not like we're not experiencing it here in Canada. Yeah. I think that's one of the big issues is that these wildfires, that's climate change. Yeah, um, the equivalent to, to being outside here in, in Victoria, even during those wildfires is the equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes. That's how climate change is affecting us here. I mean, and the, the acidification of our oceans is totally affecting all of the coastal regions. And so it's not like it's something that's happening over there and we don't have to deal with it. It's happening right here in our own front yards and backyards. So how, how do we deal with it? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I'll ask you the question. What can we do? <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, to me, what we've got to do is start moving in the exact opposite direction of where we've been moving. We've been moving towards more and more and more, and we've got to move towards less and less and less. Mm -hmm. um, we have to get rid of cars. Uh, we have to replace that with trains and public transit. We have to get yes. rid of airplanes. Uh, we have to get rid of uh, 4,000 square foot houses for a family. Um, the, you know, and the thing is, all of the plastics uh, totally totally yeah all, all of the policy ideas in order to make these changes exist all of the technical solutions that we need exist already and and you can look at examples like the tsuke first nation that's just near here in victoria 
they're, they're, they're completely self-sufficient in terms of energy and food. I mean, that's a beautiful example. Let's look to that and, and ask them questions. It's, t it's possible, it's totally possible. And, and that's the thing is we need to keep in mind that, that a, lot of, a lot of the, what we need to do is, you know, it's, it's happening already. Um, so it's not like all of these policy ideas are totally out of reach, you know? We, we just need the political and social will. That's it, bottom line. Okay. So. so social will is controlled to a large extent, I would say, by the media. And here in Victoria, the media is pushing for more pipelines and mocking those who don't want more. Um, so, I mean, to me, I think we've got to build our own media, but I, that's not happening. So, I mean, the role of the media in, in terms of the social end of this is, is, is important. That's what makes the issue so confusing, too, is that all of our media, which basically is controlling our worldviews and our perceptions and our collectively held agreements that are, that are stated or non-stated, basically our, our, our whole culture is largely defined by the media these days because of, of, of the reality of, of, their, of, of the technological revolution that we're in. People are constantly on their phones. Like that is what is making up our collective understanding of what is real. And so that's why this whole situation is so confusing because through the media, which is largely owned by the corporate powers that are pushing for pipelines, we're being told that, yes, we need more pipelines, even in order to make the transition to a more sustainable future, that's, that's a lie. I mean, we're, 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 we're being fed lies. They're, they're greenwashing it all to make it seem palatable for us. And it makes it really confusing for people to even believe in climate change. There are climate deniers all over. And, oh, I'm, I'm, oh. Mm. <laughs> believe me, a lot of the smartest people I know are climate deniers. It's just the way it is. But I think yeah. uh, the large majority of people uh, now accept that uh, you know, bad things are happening and it's probably human caused and we've got to do something about it. So we do. Right. Well, I feel that it's propaganda. I, I mean, do too. It's, it's modern mass propaganda, yes. and it's very serious. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's not only on the issue of climate, but it's on the issue of everything else as well. Right. Completely. So in terms of politics or government, here we have in BC, we have the NDP, which is pushing for a huge LNG industry. Um, yeah, the, this Trans Mountain pipeline. Not Trans Mountain. Trans Mountain is, is one thing, but... LNG But the general. LNG is... is is something different. Trans Mountain is uh, is Alberta tar sands oil, yeah, and I, and I don't know. You know, you you look at the politicians and you think, what's wrong with them? Why? Who are they representing when they're pushing right. for more pipelines? It's certainly not the future. Mm -hmm. It's as though it's as though public interest is no longer the people, but it's instead it's the corporations. And it's, and it's difficult for them because, you know, in, in, in Alberta, um, the majority of, 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 of taxes and, and funding for the province actually come from these mostly foreign-owned corporations. And so basically the governments are, are, are now dependent on those, those dollars from those corporations. And, and so, you know, there's a complete failure to diversify. Uh, their, their tax revenues and so it's just this really confusing situation where, um, where, where corporations are totally embedded with, with, with politics um, and so who, who are they representing? That's the issue here. That is the issue. That's a very, very big issue. Um, there was a youth, I, I'm not sure of the name of it, youth climate strike mm -hmm. worldwide mm -hmm. on uh, March 15th and it happened in Victoria as well. You were one of the organizers, I think. How, how did that go? It was an incredibly exciting day. Incredibly exciting day because I think it clarified something really important for, for us is that we don't need to lose hope. We don't need to feel overwhelmed by the enormity of our situation because the movement right now in terms of 
people opening their eyes to what is real. I mean, seeing through all of this confusion with media and politicians and like, what is this climate situation? Is, you know, pe people are waking up all over the world to, to what is actually going on and what needs to happen. 2,000 people here in Victoria came out, 2,000 young people. And did, the kind of- I didn't of hear that number mentioned anywhere. Yeah. I heard hundreds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah 2,000 people, if not good, more. Good. And, and worldwide, 1.6 million strong. It's amazing. It's yeah. enormous. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, young people have a kind of fresh vision that is really important right now. And so I think that there's a lot of hope that can be garnered from that kind of movement. I, I think it's stronger than ever right now. Is anything going to come of it? I mean, what is the future of the movement? Because we can see that where we are right now, there's massive resistance to the changes we have to make. So can this movement and, and other groups break through that and, and decar us and move us towards, for example, trains here in Victoria? Mm. And, and, you know, You're right. Uh, it's just crazy that yeah. it, it doesn't happen. So is there any kind of plan to move things ahead? Our movement needs to build coalitions yes. with all of the other movements that are happening right now. Because the more we get informed about what's going on, we can start to understand that climate change is about, it's about, a, it's about a class struggle. It's about, it's about capitalism. It's about a long history of colonialism. So partnering with the indigenous resurgence movement, that's huge, 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 huge. Totally. I've um, never heard of the indigenous resurgence movement. Well, well, you know, this fight against a uh, history of colonialism that is still happening to this day. Um, like all, all, all of these, this rapid industrialization in Canada and all over the world, it's, it's present day colonialism. Absolutely. I mean, this is stolen land that we're, that we're sitting on stolen land right now. And to think that some government can come along and be like, oh, sorry, we're going we're gonna to build a huge mining project and, and sorry that it's going to poison all your waters so that you can't fish anymore, you can't drink the water. Um, we, don't, we don't really care. I mean, that, that's basically, that's colonialism, Ab absolutely. You look at Unistoten up here in our own province, um, trying to build a pipeline through their traditional territories. It, it's I haven't heard a word about that for a couple of weeks now. Do you have any idea of what's happening up there? They're building another resistance camp up there. Okay, good. Um, but the pipeline is also being built. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the LNG thing is huge. And huge. how it's going to be stopped, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it, can, it cannot be allowed to go ahead because mm -hmm. if that industry gets, I mean, it is going to destroy this province. It is going to poison this province. And, and yet it's, it's being kept so much in the dark that people, it's, it's not an issue. Juicy Smollett is an issue on Canadian television, but, <laughs> but this pipeline isn't, you know, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. really incredible. Yeah. My hope, my hope and, and, and you know, what I really believe One to minute. be happening is that people all, all over the world are, are opening their eyes up to, to what is really going on in terms of the fact that we're being misinformed. And what is really important to us is actually living in coherence with the natural systems of the earth. That's why indigenous populations are the ones that are most likely to get renewable energy systems because you know, the, the natural energy cycles like the sun and the wind and the water, that, th that is our truth as humans that exist in, in interconnectedness with our natural ecosystems. Like living in cities makes us think that water, foods, uh, energy come from the economy, but they come from nature. We are part of nature and our best interest, our most natural interest is one in which we live in a regenerative society where we are regenerating our ecosystems. And that's part of the movement. Yeah. Antonia, we're going to stop with that because that's a very good place to stop. Sure. Yeah, exactly right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck to us all, folks. This is uh, crisis time, and I don't know how we're going to get out of it. <laughs> Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.